Now, on this deck, this is a really nice Sony deck. They're rather expensive. Um, and uh, it's an HDV deck, so it can import standard definition mini DV tapes as well as high definition video tapes. So basically, you pop a tape in there, you hook it up. Basically, there's an output on the back of the device for uh, Firewire. It's just like the, let me turn this around. Maybe I can give you a, a quick look at that. So basically, what you've got is right here, you have your HD DV. That's that. Uh, Firewire port that you can connect to. It also has an HDMI out if you wanted to also monitor it on a larger TV. You could do that. And there's some other, you know, ports that it's got on here that you can do. Pretty high-end professional equipment. But if you do have access to one of these, it can get around some of that copyright problems that you run into because you can run, let me go back to the back here real quick, because you can run through on the back of this deck these other compo components is you can actually run, there's an in and an out. And if I run in for my VCR into here, in, into the in port, and use the S-Video, and then use these two, assuming your VCR has an S-Video port, then you can run those two for the audio. And then you can go out using the FireWire port to your computer, and this one won't give you that blackened video. So it'll get a really good quality uh, capture from your VCR tape. So that's a great way to do it from any analog source that you want to do. And so that might be a, a, a very valuable tool for you. The deck's pretty straightforward, um, except for one thing. When you're going to capture standard definition video, you've got to make sure that it's set to the right mode. I'm going to turn it on here, hitting the power button. And you see the screen kind of lights up just a little bit. And on here, you can see it's already set for high definition video. And the only thing you might have to change is over here on the side, there's actually a little wheel. And this little uh, wheel is where you can control what happens on the menu. And if you click the middle button, I'm sorry, uh, menu, I've got to click the menu first. <laughs> and there you go. And so you can choose different settings by hitting the down arrow or up arrow. And what we want is this one right here, that HD DV selection. So if we wanted to import standard definition video instead of high definition video, we click that middle button. Then we can choose auto if we want. Oh, I'm sorry. Oops, there we go. And then I push the middle button again. And there you go. And you have a choice between auto or go directly to HD, or I know I want it to be DV. Now, one thing I want to point out to you for HD video, notice it's 1080i. It's, it's uh, really 60i is what it's going to import, or 50 if you're using something like uh, PAL format. But for standard video in the States, it's usually set to 1080i. And so you want to shoot in 1080i to import on this deck if you're using like a Canon cam quarter, you can run into some problems trying to import because some of the codecs, when they do with high definition video and they save it to the tape, may not be the same for working with Sony and with Canon. So it's your safest bet is to actually record on your Canon cameras with 1080-60i uh, video. That would be your best choice. So in this case, you could choose down and choose DV and then click menu to pop out of there. And now you can see over here, it actually says DV instead of HD. But that's how you can change it depending on whether you're importing standard definition video or high definition video. Now, if someone did record something like 24 frames per second, they're probably going to have to bring in their camcorder and hook it up directly in order for it to import OK, because the Sony deck's probably not going to be able to handle it. But it's nice. It gives you a nice preview screen to play your tape on and little controls over here to hit stop, rewind, play, that sort of thing. So it's a really nice deck, great tool. Um, and they're a little expensive, a little pricey, but very valuable. So that's basically how you would do it. Let me show you now, go back to Final Cut Pro uh, to show how to import. <clears throat> when you first launch Final Cut Pro, let me give you a br brief orientation to what you're going to see on the screen. Over to the left is where you're going to see your videos. Over here is like a preview of whatever clip you're watching over here. And this is your preview window from whatever's down here. And this down here is your timeline. Here's the beginning. Here's the end. And all you have to do is drag a clip down here to add it to your timeline. So that's how that works. But to capture a video, you want to make sure your settings are set right. So if I know I'm going to import high definition video, I would need to, I'll go ahead and turn the camera on. I'm going to go to Final Cut Pro and go to Audio Video Settings. And this right now, you can see it's set to DV. So it's standard definition. It doesn't say HDV. So I need to change that to HDV and choose 1080-60, 1080i-60, which I mentioned before. So that's the format we're recording in. And then here, choose HDV. 
And then here, what I would choose, device control, well, it depends on what device you've got hooked up. Um, if I actually had that Sony deck hooked up, then I would choose the Sony HDV Firewire if I actually had this thing hooked up. But otherwise, I would go, in this case, with this camcorder to HDV Firewire. And then video playback, that just depends if you have an extra monitor that you want to play back the video on, then you can do that. I'm not going to bother with those right now. I'll click OK. Now when I go to Login Capture, still getting a problem trying to initialize this deck. Ah, but of course we do. That's because it wasn't turned on probably before I started Final Cut Pro. So I'm going to quit Final Cut Pro. I'm going to relaunch. Sometimes if the equipment isn't on when Final Cut Pro first is launched, it doesn't recognize the device. In fact, that's why it looks for it right away. All right. So this time, when I go to File, make sure the settings are set up right. I want to make sure they're still remembered. Yes, it did remember them. File, Login Capture. And now we're getting that camera. Yay. But basically what you've got here is a, a way for you to capture the video. And that's one of the problems you can run into when trying to import. If your device isn't turned on before you launch Final Cut Pro, it's not going to capture. So make sure the hardware is turned on before you launch Final Cut Pro, and then it will, should work fine. And the same way, I think, with iMovie. It prefers to have the hardware on before you try to import. All right? So um, basically, when I want to import, then what I could do is I might want to actually label my video. Because when you start getting a list of a bunch of videos over here on the left, it can get very confusing. So I might want to name it something. So I named this one Test, just a description. And then it automatically is going to give it that name. It's going to give it a real name. And all I got to do is, is capture the Now button. And now it's going to capture the video. And I'll just play around a little bit here. Hello. And then when you're done, it says press Escape to stop. So I'm going to press Escape on my keyboard here. And then it's done. And I can close out. And now I've got a clip right here that I can double click. And here's sort of my playhead, and you can see that it's actually in there. Oh, uh, we, I just realized we didn't actually get anything but one frame um, of this. And the reason that happened, and that's a good little thing for me to point out to you, I had an error. I don't have a tape in here. With iMovie, I can record right away whether I have a tape in the camcorder or not. But with Final Cut Pro, you have to have a tape in the camcorder. Doesn't have to be recording, but it has to have a tape in there. And if you don't have a tape in here, you're going to get something like this, which is like six frames long. That's basically nothing. It, there's no video. And so you have to actually have a tape in there. Then when you import, it should import fine. Okay? So hopefully this points out to you some of the ways to import video, some of the things that can snag you to try to troubleshoot when it's not working. Um, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a question at questions at askthetechies.com. Coming up next time, we're going to explain a little bit more of this Final Cut Pro interface and how to do some basic editing. Thanks for watching.